So it's been said that retail has changed more in the last 20 years than it has in the last 300. And it will change more again in the next five years than it has in the last 20. I love this film, I never use it. Yeah. 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 Right, so welcome to this first episode in the series, The Death of the High Street, and how fitting. Well, we're going to be wandering all over the United Kingdom and maybe further afield, looking at the current state of retail here. Whether it's towns that are struggling and the high streets maybe at worst dead, to those areas that are still thriving and it's a success story and looking at what makes a high street still do well. So if this sounds of interest here and you're new to the channel, hit subscribe and come along for this journey. So yeah, I want this series to be an interactive series with you, the audience. So from my previous videos, you've probably seen that I've walked around a lot of the abandoned streets and boarded up streets that already exist. But every time I put a video out, I learn so much from the comments section, be that of information about certain places or what I like more is personal history and personal experience of the places. So I really want this to be an interactive experience with you and go on maybe, I don't know, seven, eight episodes. I don't know how many it'll be. But yeah, I want to learn from you, so do get in touch. And I've not really got a plan, apart from taking my camera and walking around. So I want you to point me in directions. So what's your high street like? Is it doing well? Is it thriving? Or is it, is it dying? What's your personal memories of the high street like? I'd love to hear from you. I want to speak to as many people as possible from all over the United Kingdom and maybe get you involved and hear your stories. So yeah, if you're not following, subscribe and come along for this journey. I want to learn with you. I think it's going to be really, really good. So this first episode is just going to be a bit of a, an explore of areas near me, near where I live. Just having a look round the towns near me, seeing what's doing well, what's not doing well. So it'll just be a bit of an introduction. We won't go into too much detail, just a brief history. And we'll learn more as the series goes along. So this first area that I've come to, Halifax, it's like the biggest town to near where I live. And it's got a bit of both really. It's got that classic sort of deprived high street that is showing everywhere. I've only been here about 10 minutes and I'm already seeing a lot of like the boarded up shops like this. So it does have that feel of a struggling high street, but also there's massive success stories from Halifax, which we'll look into as well. And I think that it is doing a lot of things right. From knowing this town for the past, what? I've been coming to Halifax since I was probably about 10. And I've got to say, it's way better now than it was 10 years ago. So we'll go and look at some of those things that make it it's partly a success story. So here's just a few of the big names that have shut down in the past 20 years. So you've got Toys R Us, Woolworths, Debenhams, BHS, Topshop. What else can you think of? Let me know in the comments. And a lot of these, now, which one is it? Yeah, it's Debenhams. Debenhams first opened in its original form in 1778 and shut in 2021. That's 243 years. Wow. But yeah, what else do you know? What can you remember? Let me know. see that then I was just walking up a street there where pretty much every single shop was empty for sale nothing going on in it but just one back from that main high street where it actually seemed to be doing all right but one thing that I absolutely love about Halifax and a lot of these northern towns like Bradford Halifax the old architecture the stunning buildings when you just look up walk through these don't look just on the ground level look up to the sky and at the buildings and it's stunning and that wealth that these towns once had from all the mills and the powerhouse of industry that they once were so stunning and then you get monstrosities built like this it's such a shame you get giant things like that just next to the beautiful old theater the victoria theater with stunning architecture i think it shut down mate that's it now and again i want a regular yeah. But I have been in on occasion when you've been in town and you fancy a very well. Yeah, yeah. The good news is I've just read this morning is that market, you know, Halifax yeah, Market, yeah. Yeah, there's that big pocket middle. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's always been a veg store around it for years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're transferring them somewhere else. All right. And where the clock tower is below, that eventually they're going to flag it off 
and have seating nice. that pub, which is nice. Yeah, well, I think that's it, isn't it? The, like the town's maybe like dwindling a little. Market, yeah. market seems to be doing fine. That's it's it, like we've gone it? back, back in time a little bit to the that, market. That, that's where I mean, I live in Rig uh, Rig House, that's it. And Huddersfield now, I never use it. Yeah. Dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it went for students in Huddersfield, yeah. it'd be a ghost town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're spending, spending money all on them, so they're shutting all these here traditional shops down. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, They'll yeah. be coming out. I mean, it's WH Smiths, there's books. Yeah. They don't know where they're going to go. Yeah, now, are they yeah, going to yeah, come yeah. around and say, you know, unless yeah, he finds yeah. a decent sort of different site, because yeah. all that's going to get flattened. The old market's getting flattened, the multi story car park's being taken down. So, everything in Huddersfield that was traditional, like the market in the 60s and 70s, that, that got an iconic ceiling. Mm. It was classed that as a must be an elegant site, because yeah. it was like a commercial, you know yeah. what I mean? It went up and down, and they're always taking pictures of that. You know, mm. but now you see, once that's gone and it's flattened and all that, all that's gone, which is all still between all being shut for you. Character in Louisville is it's gone, it's lost. Yeah. You know, it's, it's lost. so true. And it's, that's why I like, I'm going to go to the market now and have a look yeah. around and stuff. Yeah. It's good to see yeah. a thriving Cheers. market. Yeah. Todd, I'm from Hebden, Hebden Bridge, Tomadon Way. Yes. Market in Tomadon's doing ace. There you go. So you useful, see. you know what I mean? Yeah, there you are, you yeah, see, yeah. which you've got to use and what you lose. Yeah, exactly. But if you've got local people that will buy, like myself, that'll use it, obviously we're a dying breed, the youngers don't want to know. Mm. But if you've got such as us going back years, we'll keep using these pubs. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, we're yeah. dying off like pretty good pubs now. Yeah. Ah, mate, well, thank you for being here. Oh, you're welcome, nice. mate. Appreciate yeah. it, mate. Yeah, nice one. Nice All the best. Take care. Yeah, yeah. So just got chatting to this nice fellow as I was looking at this abandoned pub, and he just stopped and started looking at it as well, and we just got chatting about the decline of pubs and the high street in general. But he was talking about how he loves the market here, and he was telling me a lot about it which leads nicely on to the next bit which I was going to talk about which is where the high street came from and so it evolved naturally from markets now markets have been around for as long as humans have engaged in trade they've always been around and they were generally in the center of the town and surrounding them there would have been like metal workers leather workers um, all different sorts of trades which would have been useful to have around there and let's go to Halifax Market now, which again is in the centre of the town and have a little look around there and seeing what's still still going on in that market. Right, so here we are in Halifax Market and it's massive. I forgot how big it was, I've not been here for a while. But it's an absolutely massive building with so many different stalls in here, all useful stuff. Really useful things you find in a market. And you can imagine with the expensive rent and ground rent and overheads that come with owning an actual shop or renting an actual shop on the high street, it must be so appealing to come and find a place like a decent market like this that is busy to have your premises in. Just save so much money and still operate well. It's busy in here, so much stuff. You've got all your clothes, your useful stuff, get everything on here. Kids clothes, sandwiches, snack bar, fellow with his shirt off walking around drinking a can of Stella. You've got your luggage over there, pets. You've got all your stuff for your dogs and your cats. The little news agents here and then your butchers. You've got your place for cutting keys as well. So you know what I said back in the day when it was all those useful things around? You've got such useful things in a market. Everything's there, everything you need really. Got a record shop as well in here. Just everything you need, really. And like, we've got one in Todd as well. Tobenden's got a really good market. We'll head there as well. Got the best butty shop in the world in there. But it's almost like we've backtracked a little bit now. The high street obviously had that boom and was growing and growing and growing. And then in a way we've kind of gone, let's go back to markets. Markets are probably easier to use. Everything's there, the ground rent's less. It's all close together. And then on the other side of that, you've got the grand kind of market. It's like the Trafford Centre. Do you know what I mean? These grand places that are built with everything you need there, all together in one place. But I was gonna take you to the Trafford Centre, but to me, that is just hell on earth. So I'm not gonna visit the Trafford Centre, but, but you know what the Trafford Centre is. A giant shopping complex that you have to drive to. It's not in the city, but parking's free. So that's appealing to some people. But what it is really is just a massive market with all those places there. You get food there, you can get all your stuff. So there's this message on this shop that's closed down. It just says, thank you to all our lovely customers. It is with our deepest regret and a tear in our eye that we've reluctantly had to say goodbye. 
So you can see these places didn't want to shut down, but just some things can't survive. And just next to it, another shop that shut down, it was a clothes store. And there's a sign in the window here that says, notice of application for a premises license under the Gambling Act. And this is going to be turned into a, a, a bookies. It's going to be turned into a paddy power. As you can see, that's what these places can come in. And you know, it's right next to another betting shop. Those places can just come in because they've got the money to do it. You don't want your town to just turn into that. Just loads of bookies. It's not a good look. It's not good. It's not good for people, is it? But there's this here, the Westgate Arcade, which is new. This is pretty new, maybe, I don't know, last 10 years. But as I said, Halifax is, in my opinion, looking a lot better than it was in the last 10 years. This place is cool. There's loads of good stuff going on. So let's have a little wander up it. So we've got a record store there, which is cool because vinyl came back. It came back and it succeeded and vinyl stores started popping up everywhere, which I know my dad's annoyed about because my dad said he was like, when that sort of just came to an end or he thought it was the end, he had all these incredible records that he just took to the tip. He was just like, there were so many, he was just like, these ain't gonna come back. He kept a few, but God, I bet there was some stuff there that was worth some. Well, yeah, a nice busy arcade. Well, lots of different things, shops, bars, cafes. It's doing well. And then just next to that arcade, an empty shop there, and then a massive grand boarded up building. It's called the Theatre Royal, it says on there. It says 1790 to 1904. Never actually taken notice of this building before, but it's well nice, but completely boarded up. I know places like the Trafford Centre have a lot of appeal to some people. And like, I've come to Halifax today, I drove to Halifax and I've had to pay for parking. Don't know how much it'll cost me, but those places like the Trafford Centre, which is just a giant marketplace, you can go there, it's free parking. Why would you put yourself through the stress of going into a busy city if you wanted to visit all them different shops? When you can just go to places like the Trafford Centre or the White Rose Centre or Meadow Hall. There's loads of them, there's so many op options if you just wanted to go for a day of shopping. Instead of having to go to the city, pay for parking, get the train in where it's going to be busy. And there's all them things there now as well. I think there's hotels at the Trafford Centre now. I'm pretty sure there's hotels so you can go shopping and you can just stay there, do some more shopping in the morning. Sounds fucking awful. But obviously online shopping as well has changed everything. So we'll probably do a little bit more about that in another episode. Another nice building there, just boarded up. I don't know what that used to be actually, but looks pretty nice. Something else here. Oh yeah, another one here. So now we'll go have a little look at something else that Halifax is doing well. And it is a success story really for what it's doing. And in a way, it's what a lot of places will have to do to sort of bring people back to the town. So this is the Peace Hall here. Yeah, so it's Peace, P-I-E-C-E, -E, like a piece of cloth, not like War and Peace. So the Peace Hall is the only remaining Georgian cloth hall in the world. And it was used as a place for trading cloth back in the day. So yeah, the significance of this place is absolutely massive, not just for trading around this area in the north, but all across the nation. And it really developed us as a country and, and how we traded. So this place had a massive refurbishment done. I think it was in 2017. Now it used to be a bit rough and ready, this place. I actually really liked it. We used to hang out here when we were younger, but there was like a guitar shop up there and there were loads of different little quirky shops. And obviously it got loads of money put into it. I think it was part of that like Northern Powerhouse scheme, George Osborne's Northern Powerhouse scheme. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's where the money came from. To kind of redevelop it and turn it into something new as a place to bring people to it. And I've got to say it did work. Obviously you can see that big stage over there where so many people have played. I've just looked online, Madness are coming to play here soon. I remember my mate Lewis, he said recently actually, he was like, he couldn't believe that Queens of the Stone Age were coming to play here in Halifax because he said that he used to probably sit in this back when it was before the refurbishment and listen to Queens of the Stone Age. But to get their massive names coming to Halifax, you just wouldn't have thought that back in the day, back 10 years ago. 
it really has brought that sort of new tourism to the town which is what these places have to do places that are adapting and changing you have to give people a reason to come to these places and this has worked it's not that useful here it's obviously amazing to bring people to the town but is it useful the market is very useful is the piece all useful it's entertaining but not that useful well that's it isn't it towns have to adapt areas have to adapt and make it a more interactive experience for coming to the town no longer can you just have your shops and people are going to go oh i need to buy something i'll go there there's just too many options now online shopping big shopping complex centers like the trafford center you need to add something else to your town to the shopping experience. And across the road over there, just something else entirely boarded up. I've got a feeling that might have been a club that we used to go to when we were a bit younger. I'm not sure, but yeah, boarded up, whatever it was. So there's just another pub as well that looks shut down and boarded up. That's two pubs I've seen bang in the centre of town that are shut down. I wonder how many more there is. Giant empty office block there. So I went to Manchester the day, and it's the same at Manchester as well. You walk around there, even one of the most busy cities in the country, I'd say, and you still come across loads of boarded up shops, empty places. No city is uh, protected from this. But we went and we did an escape room, and it was in a big old office block, which is clearly not being used anymore for that. So they turned it into loads of escape rooms. Another good use for something like that. Did we get out? That's irrelevant. Doesn't even matter. Somewhere else here that's just completely boarded up. Nice end building. So yeah, this is just a few minutes walk up from the centre of Halifax and it does get pretty bad there. There's like a row completely boarded up there. What's that? And there we have it, the third closed down pub I've found. The Beehive and Cross Keys. So Halifax, a tale of good and bad really, you can't really avoid how many boarded up empty shops there are, big buildings just left with no use, that is all on show, there's a load of bookies, there's a load of vape shops, things like that, but it's also doing a lot of good, look at the Peace Hall, look at what that's doing, bringing big bands to the town, bringing loads of people in, the arcade place that we went to, the market still bustling looking like that's where people probably want to do something now instead of renting an actual shop. It's doing a lot of stuff right and I think there's a lot of places it could learn from a town like Halifax with what it's doing. It's not perfect but it's definitely doing some things that are good. Now let's see how much parking costs us. 250, not too bad. Right so let's go look at some other places near me and see what the high street there is like. Right so welcome to Hebden Bridge which is the town I actually live in. Now you've got Halifax where I've just been about a 20 minute drive down the road. But Hebden Bridge, it's a really small town, but the high street here is thriving. It is in no way at all dying. It's a Tuesday today, but I bet it's still really busy. But on a weekend when you come here, when I'm trying to walk to work on a weekend, it is crazy busy. Honestly, you literally can't walk down the pavements. It is so rammed. So let's go have a little look round and see why maybe this town's still doing all right. So yeah, aesthetically this town is really beautiful. It's so picturesque in an ace location with the hills all around it, the river running through it, the mill chimneys in the background, which if you watch any other videos, you'll know I love. But yeah, this place all year round, it's really busy, especially in summer. It gets crazy in summer, but it doesn't struggle at all all year round. 
It does occasionally get affected by really bad flooding, which knocks the town, but apart from that, like apart from that sort of natural disaster that occurs occasionally, this high street is absolutely fine. So you've got busy pubs, loads of them, loads of cafes, candle shops, gift shops. Yeah, so down that way you've got a street full of gift shops, pubs, there's a co-op on the end, stupidly expensive co-op that I never use. But it's all down there and it's all a load of hustle and bustle, loads of cafes as well. Coming down here you've got a bike shop where you get your bike service, that's useful. A dog cafe, there used to be a Bucky's here as well, it was a Ladbrokes. But that's gone now and it's taken over by a, a candle shop. Now this town isn't with outboarded up property though, there's one, one here. used to be the green grocers that and that's currently boarded up but I doubt it'll be for too long a witch bookshop crooked books which is a witch bookshop so behind me down there you've got the square which is always busy there's sometimes a market there which is all right not the best market to be fair there's much better markets and then over here this is a nutty thing you've got a scuba diving shop and dive school now geographically, if you look at Ebden Bridge on a map, I'm pretty sure we're about as far away from the ocean as you can possibly be. But here on the thriving high street of Ebden Bridge, the scuba diving shop and school stays open. Wow. But it is similar to what I was talking about in Halifax before. Now like I've been showing you around and there's a load of lovely gift shops, there's a load of pubs and restaurants and cafes and shops selling tat essentially. So it's catered towards them tourists. It is 100% now a tourist town, but I've lived here all my life and it is so expensive to try and get anything done in Hebden Bridge. There are no cheap shops. Everything now is just catered towards them tourists. So the price just goes up massively on everything. The bakers, the butchers, just everything. So where do I shop? I shop in Todmorden, the next town along, which is actually really, really useful. Now over here we had the old Ironmongers, the hardware store. So that was the only hardware store that existed in this town until very recently. There's a new one that's opened and I'm very glad about that because it was, it was fast becoming that this town had nothing useful. But that one for years was the only one that was there and now that's turned into an Airbnb. And they're literally calling it the old ironmongers. So that's what's happening, everything's just becoming Airbnb is catering exactly towards those tourists. A thriving high street, doing so well, bringing tourism in, people can make money from that, it's great. It's just not useful. So I've just got to Todmorden, which is the next town along from Hebden Bridge, about three miles down the road. And like I said with Hebden Bridge, it's just not useful at all for a local. Great for tourism, but just not useful. Now, Todmorden, it doesn't have that same kind of bustling high street as Hebden and that touristy feel, but it is so useful here. A food shop in Hebden Bridge at the co-op or the one stop, it would be extortionate. Come to Todmorden, you've got a Lidl down there, you've got a B&M Bargains, you've got an Aldi, you've got a Morrison's, you've got the amazing market which we'll go check out now. You've got spoons for a pint. Look, say what you want about spoons, if you want a cheap pint it's great. Hebden Bridge, five or a pint minimum. Spoons, I bet I could go get a Guinness now for less than 2 50 You've got this store as well where you can literally get anything, absolutely anything in this place. just got here though and I've realised market's shut, shuts at 1pm on a Tuesday which is annoying, we just missed it. I really wanted to get a ham corner butty and just show you how good it is, but we'll do that in another video. I'll just come back and show you that market in another, in another video because it is worth doing. Best butty on earth. So yeah, you've got two towns next to each other. One thriving, so busy, popular but not useful, but that's great. That's amazing that that happens there. And then this town, just a few miles down the road, it's not got that crazy tourist feel to it as Hebden does, but it's so useful. And that is what essentially a high street needs. It, neither, it either needs a massive pull, like a big sort of like, oh, let's go to this place and check it out like Hebden, or it just needs to be useful like Todmorden. It just needs to be like, right, I need that thing. I can go there and I can get it. It is as simple as that really. So I've just driven over to Burnley, which isn't far from me at all either. And I've come to see another market, another type of market. And this one is the supermarket. Only it's not just a supermarket, it's a super store. It's the giant Tesco. 
I've not actually been here, or maybe not been here for years anyway. But my girlfriend was saying, oh, you're going to love it. It's absolutely crazy. You can get anything you want in there. So let's go explore this. This is the modern day market, the giant supermarket. And already, look, you've got your Tim Tims there. Just like the other market, providing all those services, key cutting, dry cleaning, shoe repairs. You can get everything done here, the modern day market. This place is absolutely massive. Like you've got all your like general supermarket stuff there. Then walking down here, it looks like you've got an optician's. Yeah, so you've got your Vision Express there. So you can come here and just get everything you need done all in one go. Let's have a more of a wander around, I'm loving it. Ooh, I do actually need a sun lounger. So it's three floors this place. You've got the downstairs ground parking, second floor, all this. And then up here, it's like a clothes store. So you can do your clothes shopping as well. Look at this place. It's got an elevator to take you downstairs. You've got a pharmacy there as well. So you can pick up all your prescriptions, your health stuff. Literally everything you need, it's massive. You've got a phone store in here as well, so you can sort all that stuff out. Everything. It's literally trying to do everything, isn't it? And succeeding. I didn't see this on the way in as well, but down here... The Costa. You've got a Costa down there as well. So there we have it, the modern day market, the supermarket, where you can literally get everything that you need done. You can buy your clothes, you can get a key cut, you can get your garden furniture. So that's what the high street is contending with as well, isn't it? And we'll try and find more and more things like this on this series that are just competing with the high street that are, let's face it, easier to do, easier to get everything sorted all in one go. So there we go, the first episode of The Death of the High Street. Thank you for watching. And if you want to follow along with the rest of the series, make sure you're subscribed. And also do get in touch. If this film's maybe reminded you of what your town looks like, do let me know. I'd be really keen to come check it out.